Over the past few months, I've received a lot of comments asking for scientific analysis of different research studies. And I agree, you deserve to know which tinnitus treatments and solutions are evidence-based and scientific and which are not. So in this episode of Sound Science, our educational podcast that goes into different research topics around tinnitus, you have myself, Ben Thompson, and Tracy Peck Holcomb, two audiologists with Tribal Health, who give a deep dive into some important research topics. And we're going to start with a new scientific article that came out in 2021. This article is the first of its kind. It's a meta-analysis on the evidence for sound therapy. Researchers looked at over 200 randomized control trials across the globe and came out with some criteria to evaluate how and if sound therapy is a valuable and effective form of tinnitus treatment. The short response that I have or the summary here is that the researchers found that sound therapy is an effective treatment as deemed by these rather strict qualifications of quality metrics. And the researchers also give some extra tips for what complements sound therapy and what they found in their research. So thanks for being here on this episode of Sound Science. Now let's get it started with Dr. Tracy and myself. The first study that we're gonna talk about today, the title is Efficacy of Sound Therapy Interventions for Tinnitus Management a protocol for systematic review and network meta-analysis. So the researchers um, based out of China, the this group um, took a look at, and this is the first study of this kind, so it's kind of novel in that sense. This research group out of China did a network meta-analysis, which pulls together from all of the research literature, all of the to date, um, when the study was published, research articles that look at uh, tinnitus treatment and multiple types of tinnitus treatment. They pulled from major research databases such as PubMed, Medline, um, the Cochrane Library, and several others to uh, pull this data together and then do a review. The researchers used a framework called the PICOS framework, which stands for Participants, Interventions, Comparators, Outcomes, and Study Design. So this framework helps to break down which studies can be included in the uh, meta-analysis. And so they were looking at participants or patients with acute or chronic tinnitus. The in, uh, interventions were sound stimulation alone, sound stimulation combined with drug therapy, sound stimulation combined with educational concert consultation, or sound stimulation combined with drug therapy and educational consultation. The comparators were drug therapy, no treatment, educational consultation only, sound stimulation alone or sound stimulation combined with drug therapy. The outcomes we're looking at, they use pretty common tinnitus outcome questionnaires, the tinnitus handicap inventory um, or the THI, the tinnitus questionnaire, uh, the TQ. And we're really uh, pulling from only randomized clinical trials or RCTs. And so initially the pool of studies was a total of 1,269 studies that um, included data on uh, tinnitus treatment options. And then they narrowed it down to 22 studies that were randomized that met the criteria for randomized clinical trials with a total uh, uh, from all those studies of 1,522 participants um, included in this meta analysis. So a really large pool of study participants to be able to gather and pull treatment data and outcomes from. This is a short interruption from today's video to announce the tinnitus quiz. If you're watching this video, there's a good chance that you or someone you know has tinnitus. We know how much tinnitus can impact your daily life, and we're here to help. Visit tinnitusquiz.com and take a two-minute quiz to receive personalized treatment plans that have helped hundreds of people learn to manage their tinnitus. Start now at tinnitusquiz.com. In the results section, they're cited to say that our meta-analysis not only preliminarily confirmed that sound therapy can significantly reduce the symptoms of tinnitus, but in addition, combination therapies like sound therapy and counseling have been demonstrated to perform better than individual treatments. They also went on to say that the effectiveness of tinnitus retraining therapy has increased significantly. And so the conclusion of this study 
which is the first of its kind, this sort of network meta-analysis, what they showed in terms of the efficacy of sound therapy compared to other treatments is that sound therapy yielded the greatest reduction in tinnitus severity and overall improvement in quality of life. And then furthermore to that, combination therapies that implement sound therapy plus some form of educational counseling or cognitive behavioral type uh, counseling um, yielded even uh, more effective treatment outcomes for patients. And so, you know, I think in conclusion, we can we can agree that a holistic comprehensive approach um, is is the best approach to uh, tinnitus management and treatment long term. Yeah, let's talk about how this relates to someone in the day to day. So at Treble Health, Dr. Tracy, myself, we talk with people every day who have bothersome tinnitus who are looking for help. And what we recommend often is a combination of sound therapy and an individualized way to reduce the psychological effect of tinnitus as well. And it's great to see this independent research, which is the meta-analysis, right? The, The top tier of research and validation saying, yes, not only is this our clinical experience, but this is found over studying over 20 different studies. Day to day, this means we're using the best practice gold standard research as part of our approach, as part of our care. So uh, for you who's listening, we want to make sure that you're getting the the maximum benefit out of sound therapy because clearly it works. You know, Globally, sound therapy works to reduce tinnitus and improve quality of life related to tinnitus. Uh, additionally, there's other things we can use. Yeah. And one thing I um, didn't mention initially was that this, you know, this meta-analysis, what it does is it pulls um, studies from all over the world. So it's not, you know, just the United States, it's countries all over and showing very similar results across the globe and across uh, different um, treatment implementations. So um, I think this is sort of an excellent overview. And then I think there are some things that, you know, could continue to be studied that might help sort of give further. And then I think there are some additional things that could be studied and evaluated. And there's a need for in the research um, in the field of uh, tinnitus and sound sensitivity that could give better validation or efficacy for the use of these types of treatment. So the combination of sound therapy plus the counseling. And one of these things is, which, you know, for many years uh, of being in this field, like it wasn't available really, but now we have the capability to do imaging, actually functional MRIs or um, um, PET scans that can show changes in the brain pre and post treatment for tinnitus. And I think that coupled with, you know, the sort of behavioral interventions that we do um, every day with patients, you know, that helps to really improve the, I think just the efficacy behind implementing these treatments and for patients to be like, okay, I'm really doing something that's actually, I think it's hard to understand sometimes, like, what is this actually doing, you know, uh, over time? And so being able to show that there's actual changes in the brain from doing these treatments, I think would really be helpful. And there's more of that needed for sure. Now that we have the technology to do it. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. And let's now (laughs) transition into the second study, which is a research article that was written about tinnitus retraining therapy. Um, At Treble Health, every day we use this model of taking the best science, which suggests, hey, use sound therapy and help individuals reduce the psychological, mental, emotional impact of tinnitus. So that's exactly what we do at Treble Health. We have tinnitus relief bundle, which incorporates all this research. So if anyone needs help, definitely come to us. We'll be able to help you. The second study we're talking about today is about tinnitus retraining therapy. And I will introduce one quote that I have from the tinnitus retraining therapy article, and then I'll kick it to Tracy. So there is a snippet here, which says that the effectiveness of tinnitus retraining therapy, and for those who don't know, this is a protocol to follow that includes sound therapy worn on the ears with ear level masking devices called tinnitus maskers, plus one-on-one counseling, education, and coaching about how to improve the quality of life related to tinnitus. So the quote here is that the effectiveness of tinnitus retraining therapy has increased significantly during the past 25 years, presumably to changes incorporated in its implementation. The main improvement has been to shorten the average time until seeing clear improvement from one year to one month, with a statistically significant improvement seen at and after three months. So Dr. Tracy, is that consistent with what you see with your patients and what 
the data shows of tribal health? Yeah, I would say we're right on the mark from the the data that we've been sort of collecting with patients, you know, in, I think it's one thing to have a clinical trial and to have results from that, but, and it's a, it's a different thing to have that translate to, you know, real life sort of clinic treatment day to day with patients. And I'm super, you know, proud to say that, that those are the results that we're seeing too, that within three months time, patients are uh, seeing, and we're seeing a clinically significant change in their, in their tinnitus and the effect that their tinnitus is having on their quality of life. We also know that, you know, that it can take longer than that and usually does to, to reach that sort of full habituation, but that within, you know, a very short amount of time, patients are experiencing a significant improvement. And that's what we're, that's what we're aiming to do. And the other thing I think just as a, a another snippet from the study, um, for those who might not be as familiar with TRT or the concepts behind it, the approach of TRT, really the goal is that it aims to eliminate tinnitus as a problem by extinguishing the functional connections between the auditory and the limbic and the autonomic nervous systems to achieve habituation, the tinnitus evoked reactions, and um, subsequently the habituation of the perception of the tinnitus signal itself. And I think, you know, obviously with the name tinnitus retraining therapy, most people are like, oh, well, that's only for tinnitus. What about if I have, you know, sound sensitivity or hyperacusis or misophonia or, or some of the other auditory disorders? And the great thing about TRT is that it's been around for a long time, but it's been adapted and it's flexible and that it can be very effective for those other types of auditory conditions that people, um, that we work with patients as well on. So it's very useful. You change the protocol up a little bit, but it's very useful as well to get the same treatment outcomes, positive treatment, treatment outcomes for things like hyperacusis and misophonia. So it can be used for many different types of auditory uh, conditions, not just tinnitus. One other thing that I think is notable from this study is that um, patients ask a lot, you know, I've seen, you know, all these different things online, like what has the most, you know, evidence-based research behind it? What, what's proven to work? And if you search, you know, TRT or tinnitus retraining therapy, there's over 100 um, publications, research publications that um, show positive uh, treatment effects from this method, this combination, like you were saying, 80 to 85% of patients um, experience this improvement over that. And the other thing that's really important to note is that TRT can be used for any type of tinnitus. It can be used for any subtype of tinnitus, including somatic or somatosensory tinnitus, and including for sound sensitivity, hyperacusis or sound sensitivity that's associated with pain. So it's not, it's not just for you know, sort of the standard typical tinnitus that people um, think of it's it, the approach and the concepts behind it can be um, adapted and customized for any type of tinnitus, any type of hyperacusis. So I think that's important to note for our viewers. Yeah. One thing I really like about tinnitus retraining therapy is it creates a protocol or program that has been studied and adjusted and that when a patient, when an individual, say you're listening to this, you're wondering, what should I do? What can I do? Well, follow a system that's worked for 80 to 85% of people who've tried it previously. I mean, that's obviously the most proven path.